our SAM file is valid and it's okay. And so here's where we, where we institute QC. When we um, work, um, especially when we work converting from InDesign um, to eBook, there are several QC processes in, the, in, in between. So there's the SAM QC and there is a um, SAML QC and then finally there's an eBook QC, which is the one that you guys are gonna work on uh, during uh, the break rooms. So um, for now, we're gonna go to SAM QC. So we're gonna go to Law Form Document Workflow and remember that this is just a check to make sure that your files are okay and that if there's any issues, you can handle them um, at this point rather than leaving them uh, for later, right? Because we have this green check mark, we could actually just go into SCML, but again, it's always good to check your files. Um, it saves time and, um, and it gives you peace of mind as well. Okay. Tim has actually linked us directly to it. I'll just navigate to it just because it's easier for me, but um, you're more than welcome to click on um, that link, right? You see, Sam QC, right? And so this gives you this, um, essentially a little order, right? Uh, a little checklist, right? So that you can uh, go through and say, okay, I've done this, I've done this, and I've done this, and we're gonna go ahead and do that with our file. That's why I asked you to not close it, right? So the first thing is, is that does all the text appear in the correct order? We know for a fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom this back out for myself. We know for a fact that this is in order, but if you were to check this, this is why you have your PDF file in here in the sample files and you would all have your PDF at this point as well. Um, and what you could do is you could open up your PDF file, that opened up over here for me, and that was just a feature of Windows 10 that it allows you to do that. But you can just set it up um, side by side um, and then just spot check and say, okay, I have physical chemistry one here. It's, you know, that's a nice little uh, structure. Okay, I have my series page. So let me scroll down, make sure my series page is there and so on and so forth. And you can do that. Um, I would say spot check um, because it's really easy to do for a file that's only 22 pages. But if you have a 600 page book, you don't want to go like line by line making sure everything's there. If a chapter, uh, for example, starts on the page that it needs to start and right after the content that it needs to start, it's a pretty safe bet that it's, you know, the proper order. Um, so um, I think Tim. Oh, and, um, wants to... <clears throat> yeah, well, one quick thing at this stage uh, is just that because we type that in one long file with all the text being threaded together as a single what they call story in InDesign, 95% you know, of the stuff is just automatically going to be in the proper order. We're not looking to make sure that like paragraphs have moved around or anything like that. So just based on the nature of how we set up our InDesign file, everything's going to be correct. But things you may want to spot check are things outside that text flow. So like a table or a sidebar or maybe image placements in SAM. We do kind of what a Karin, what you mentioned, just like optimizing for the ebook version of it, making sure that images fall around their um, uh, call outs and things like that. So those are the kind of things that we're, we're going to spot check. We wouldn't necessarily spot check like that list item one comes before list item two or anything like that. Correct. Uh, and uh, just one other quick point is that we set this up for some other clients to make sure that this step that Elvis is doing happens kind of like before the book goes to print. Mm -hmm. because it's entirely possible that someone else is looking at the file it's a new fresh set of eyes someone's looking at it differently they could spot an error that maybe was missed in proofreading or things like that so when setting up your schedule it's always good to allow a little extra time at the end so that this stage is happening before the final printer deadline correct right and that's what we actually do that like before um we set it up just as Tim said it, because like, for example, you might be looking through this and realize that something is misspelled. Um, and you know, and that's something good to then go back to the type center and say, hey, we gotta fix this. And it's good to have that time without having to say, oh no, you know, stop the process and so on. Um, so here, for example, um, our sidebar actually in our typeset interrupts um, this text here. And we could sort of maneuver it um, in our SCML file to do the same thing, but um, you know, depending on your preferences, um, for example, we actually just like move it nearby. It's 
you know, it has to exist near near its call out, but it shouldn't interrupt the text. Uh, so here, for example, the sidebar is located here. It's still on page nine, as we can see here on the on the right uh, pane here, um, and it's located near the same text. And all I did there was go to the PDF, find my sidebar, selected a piece of, of text, you know, not too large so that I'm not running into any issues, uh, but just, you know, good representative, right? Copied it, control C or command C on the Mac. And in Sublime, I'll just bring that up. If you hit control F, and I'm going to assume that it's also control F on the Mac as well, just based on our last um, shortcut, um, it'll bring up the search, the find field. And I just pasted that text in. You can hit find and it will go ahead and jump to that and then you can check okay my sidebar is where it needs to be so by and large we know our uh, file is in the right order as you can see command f for mac there we go see sublime's trying to be tricky with me um so as you can see there's going to be a lot of jumping back and forth when you do qc between like the actual checklist um your file and possibly even the pdf um especially because at this stage you want to um compare right um, and that is okay that's actually expected so we know that all our text um, appears in the proper order right uh, have page IDs been placed uh, to occur with the first piece of content on the page we go through and again we're not going to go through the whole thing just for the sake of time right but um, to search for page IDs you can again bring bring up your search field right and you can type in left angle bracket page, right? And that will actually um, search for just those pages because we treat them um, as a tag. And you'll see that they have an ID, page nine, right? And I can then say, okay, page nine starts here. Take this text, copy it. Again, control C, that's what I did there. And then search in the PDF. I believe control F, uh, command F on Mac. And then find next. And we see that the page actually shifted a bit, right? Where, and that actually came, um, occurred because of the fonts, because we didn't have the fonts when the, when um, the scribe tools in InDesign went through um, and added these pages, these texts shifted a bit, but we could go ahead and then just fix that here. You should, um, if you're gonna use page numbers, uh, you should always have your fonts available. For the purposes of this demo, it doesn't doesn't really affect us that much because we don't have anything linking uh, to pages. But if you, again, have something like an index that you want to retain, um, you know, the page links and all that, um, I would suggest um, having the fonts available so that the page ID, the pages don't shift even by a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tim, I think, wanted to say something. Yeah, just again, from a kind of project manager standpoint, something that we do is um, most often the typesetter is the person that produces this XML document. We're all kind of working through it together. Mm -hmm. But in, in most cases with us, it's like the last thing the typesetter does once the book is approved is output the XML file and transmits it to the person who's going to be doing the ebook conversion. And that avoids this issue. It just makes sure that, you know, the person who has that print version of the book is the one that's going to be outputting the XML file. Um, mm -hmm. And there are other clients that I know who subscribe to this workflow. And they do the same thing when the types that are done, they produce um, packaged application files, the print PDF, and then the XML document that is going to move on later in the process. Right. Okay. So for the purposes of the demo, we're just going to go back and we're going to say, okay, we checked our pages. Everything's okay. Um, and so um, this is what Tim was discussing. We don't have to go back to the SAM file to do this, but just make sure that the images are located um, in their best location where they need to be. All right. And then um, certain images, uh, for example, in the PDF. So Richard asked if you would move the page ID in the XML file, um, or better said the SAM file. Remember, never go back to the XML file. Um, I would actually, um, at this stage, because it's so early, um, if that's the case, I would actually just go back into InDesign, get the fonts, and export uh, the XML and go through the whole process of getting back to the SAM file rather than moving the, pa the pages. Uh, there you go. Um, the pages um, in the SAM file. Um, because this is so early on, you haven't made any changes, and it's just easier to do that. And it, it literally will take you, you know, 
not even a minute, um, versus having to go through and make changes to the SAM file at that point. A very good question because um, that does come up. At this stage, what we want to do is we're making sure that the SAM file which we're going to be using is in a state where um, you know, converting it um, is not going to just like leave us with errors and so on and so forth. So um, I saw Tim unmuted. I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah, I would just, just to echo what Elvis says, we would definitely do that um, rather than manually changing it, not only because that's going to drive up so much time, but I feel like it's another thing to check. It's another opportunity for errors to be introduced because someone could you know, delete text or things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think we would always just try to catch it as early as possible. That's why we have this QC step built in so that if you're, not if your site setter for some reason didn't do it, you're only going to lose a little bit of time as opposed to dozens of hours trying to do this manually. And so just to continue on, um, images, certain images, like for example, logos um, on the title page or um, logos on the copyright page, um, they're not treated as like independent centered images and figures and so on and so forth. Um, they're actually treated as inline images. So we have to make sure that they are, um, that they are tagged or um, composed uh, appropriately. And we discussed that during composition, but this is an, another good place uh, to check at this point that, for example, the logo on your title page is BK Pub rather than figure, which will center it and do a whole bunch of things that you don't want it to do. Um, remember, um, we try to make, um, let's put it this way, we try to um, distinguish elements so that they are what they are and they're tagged as what they are rather than what they might appear to be. Uh, again, it's that idea of structure versus rendering, which I know we haven't like sort of delved too much uh, into it in the last couple of weeks, but that idea is always permeated throughout the well-form uh, document workflow. Um, we don't have these in, in our demo file, so we're not gonna go in and check that. At this point,